morning friends it's my privilege to welcome you again to this sunday morning church service it's been premiered through youtube and facebook uh, friends i would encourage you to share the link of this service with family and friends so that they can also join us with praise and worship this morning uh, we have many things to thank god for uh good to see things coming back to normalcy many people have started working full time from office economic data shows recovery job market is looking good monsoons are decent vaccinations are going on full swing in our country uh travel has started even international travel and in many states colleges too have uh, started uh But at the same time, uh, we also see the pandemic continues. Uh, today, we are also reminded of nine uh, eleven that happened some twenty years back. I mean, we still have those, uh, uh, you know, memories uh, quite vivid in our minds. Uh, persecution continues. Uh, problems which were there pre-pandemic uh, still persists. In the midst of all this, we. Uh, realize even more that Jesus Christ our lord is our comforter and our only hope i like to read couple of uh, verses from the bible it's taken from psalm 1 verse 2 and 3 but whose delight is in the law of the lord and who meditates on his law day and night that person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf uh, does not wither whatever they do prospers we know that the ever uh, green trees do not change even during winter times uh, when other trees are bare without leaves we are in the time many said that the pandemic is simply a winter time a season which is uh, very dark in many many ways so uh, the question comes to our mind how do we we stay evergreen in the times like these two things uh, uh, we can do as per the psalmist so that's given in verse 2 one is uh, meditate on his law day and night and the second is delight in the law of the lord now uh, what is the law of the lord the law the lord means uh, bible the verses in bible refers to the scriptures as the law of the lord and also it is written that everything in the bible is for our instruction it's not only 10 commandments or not only the torah therefore we are supposed to be taking the whole bible for instruction and not just be studying it we are to meditate on it jesus christ prayed day and night and meditated on the scriptures so deeply that uh, even when he was dying on the cross he prayed psalm 22 my god my god why have you forsaken me uh we are not just supposed to meditate but also to delight in the word we are to live it which is much much harder how can so the question comes to our mind how can we delight in the uh, law of the lord it is tough it is difficult but it can be achieved it can be achieved only through jesus christ uh he took uh, the curse of our disobedience we break the law of the lord all the time but because of uh, you know because he died for us on the cross uh, uh we can uh, we can we can delight in the in the law of the lord therefore uh, jesus christ and only in jesus christ can we delight in the law of the lord if we delight in the law of the lord we meditate on it uh, day and night then we become able clean and then we can last any winter of our life uh, come let's pray our heavenly and heavenly father as we gather around your name we invite the presence of the holy spirit we give you praise uh, for who you are we thank you for this beautiful morning we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your blessings over us we thank you for your great love and care 
our Father, help us to set our hearts on you and, and, and the word. Renew our hearts, O Lord. This morning we pray for the entire service, O Lord. We pray for all the people who have joined us today, O Lord. We also pray for the praise and worship team, O Lord. We pray for the technology team. We pray for all the people who are involved in making this service possible, O Lord. We also pray for the speaker, O Lord. We pray uh, for your presence and your guidance, O Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Now, over to Swati and the worship team. Good morning, church. We have been given this great privilege to come before our King of Kings and Lord of Lords this morning to worship Him. Jesus, the King of this universe, who is seated at the throne, He wants to communicate with us this morning. Our God longs for our hearts and all that He desires is a heart filled with worship. We can just come the way we are and just worship this amazing God. Um, as I was preparing and uh, just waiting on God to hear from Him, uh, God reminded me of the story of these two sisters, Mary and Martha. We know the story. Uh, we know that Jesus was invited to their house for a meal. And we know the posture of Mary and we are aware of the posture of Martha. We know that Martha was troubled, quite distracted and busy, I think busy doing good things. Uh, and we know that Mary chose to sit at the feet of Jesus. She just wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus to gaze at him and to wait to hear from him and to just look at him and, and uh, with a posture to, to just ask Jesus, what are you saying to me? And honestly, if I, if I could just be honest, uh, I've been very much like Martha over past few weeks and some of us might be at that place, troubled, worried, distracted but Jesus is calling us to be like Mary to sit at his feet and to gaze at him so even as we worship today you might be distracted or I'm not sure but God is aware and God wants to communicate with you this morning so let's just quiet our hearts and let's just be still and Turn our eyes to Him. Let's lift up our hearts and let's sing a praise of song and let's just um, pray that the Holy Spirit would come and meet with us wherever we are um, in our life and in our emotions right now. So let's sing the first song, very familiar song. We know this. Praise is rising and eyes are turning to you. Come have your way, I 
Lord Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord, that you are a strong tower and our refuge, Lord. And Lord, 
whenever we are in trouble lord we can come to you lord and you rescue us lord from all our troubles and difficult situations lord we want to thank you lord that we can find strength in you lord and when we see your face lord we feel strong lord and confident lord that the lord of this universe is there with us and he will protect us lord from every harm and danger lord father this morning lord we just want to sing hosanna unto your name lord and welcome you lord into our presence lord father in jesus name we pray and lift you up lord amen amen God is our refuge and strength an ever present help in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging the lord almighty is with us the god of jacob is our fortress and he says be still and know that i am your god i will be exalted among the nations i will be exalted in the earth the lord almighty is with us the god of jacob is our fortress Lord when we go through tough times and hardships when we have our trials lord we feel tired exhausted weary and we feel weak lord but jesus lord your word says that when we are weak you are strong lord Lord your word says that you're close to the broken hearted and you save those who are crushed in spirit So Lord we choose to say in our tough times and in our hardships and no matter what we might be going through right now we would choose to say that we will be still and know that you are our God Lord may these times we will not run away but we will run towards you Jesus Lord in the times when we are waiting and waiting we will be still Lord and know that you are our God and you hold our future Lord our time is in your hand Lord and we will be still and know that you are God Lord for the prayers that we have been waiting for the breakthroughs in our lives Lord we will be still and know that you are our God our God who is mighty our God who is sovereign who is in control our refuge our strength our ever present help in times of trouble Lord you are the king over all the battles and you are our above father you are a god who leads and and lead us lord and you are not a not the one who leaves us in between jesus but you are the god who makes a way where we can't see a way lord you are a good shepherd who goes before us lord we can hide under your wings jesus and your word says that we will soar with you So Lord we pray that you would hide us under your wings cover us Lord Would you just just talk to God at this time Would you respond would you have your prayers lifting up to the heaven as we sing the next song Hide me now under your wings. Would you make this as your prayer?
Psalm 32 verses 7 and 8 says, You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. And God says to us that He will instruct and teach us in the way that we should go. He will counsel us with His loving eye on us. Lord, we just want to thank you that you are the safest place we can come to, Lord. That we can come to hide in your presence and that we don't have to hide anywhere else. But that when we come to you, Lord, you are the one who guides us, who leads us, who is so dependable, who we can put our trust in. No matter how we come, Lord, but when we come, you take us, Lord, in your shelter and you truly are the most secure place we can be in. We just want to thank you for that, Lord.
can we say but we just want to say lord thank you thank you jesus lord we pray that holy spirit you would teach us to live a life that's pleasing unto your eyes lord you would enable us to live in every day of our lives knowing that you are our god we will be still and know that you are a god lord we thank you for this time in jesus name we pray amen hello friends for the prophetic word today i wanted you to look at the book of isaiah chapter 40 verses 26 to 31 this is the good news translation and it begins by telling us look up at the sky who created the stars you see the one who leads them out like an army he knows how many there are and calls each one by name his power is so great not one of them is ever missing you know one of the signs of encouragement hope optimism and joy is that we look up we don't look down we look up 
so the word of god is saying to us that if god will not forget the stars how will he forget us and the next verse is a correction israel why then do you complain that the lord doesn't know your troubles or care if you suffer injustice since the pandemic and even before that god knows exactly where i am exactly where you are and he cares don't you know verse 28 haven't you heard the lord is the everlasting god he created all the world he never grows tired or weary no one understands his thoughts he strengthens those who are weak and tired today being the sabbath day of rest may god encourage and strengthen all of us who are feeling weak and tired and then the word of god tells us that our strength does not depend on our youth it depends on the supernatural power that comes from god verse 30 even those who are young grow weak young people can fall exhausted but those who trust in the lord for help will find their strength renewed they will rise on wings like eagles they will run and not get weary they will walk and not grow weak so starting from the space the stars we come to the air we come to the eagles you know when you fly in a aircraft it is the wings which absorb the turbulence so the wings of the eagle are strong and it will help it to absorb a lot of turbulence and those are the kind of wings that god is going to carry us on and the favorite verse of many people who like to run marathons is that they will run and not get weary so friends the encouragement is that in this race of life we will run and not get weary thank you please join me in praying for the country our living and heavenly father uh, we thank you uh, that uh, you know that we have been born in this diverse land of ours oh lord and there is a wonderful country oh lord and uh, we pray for the prime minister the president the chief ministers the council of ministers people who are in authority in high positions and at the same time uh, people who are responsible for taking decisions for the country oh lord we pray for your blessings upon them it's our heart's desire that they seek wisdom from you oh lord and they do what is good for the country oh lord what is good for the downtrodden people who are living in poverty and and which can uplift our country in every possible respect oh lord we pray for each one of these oh lord this moment uh, we would also like to pray for the judiciary oh lord some tough decisions uh, currently uh, the top court is taking oh lord and we know that uh, you are uh, you are a just god oh lord and you are delighted when when people behave uh, you know justly oh lord so we pray for them we pray for your protection upon them we also pray uh, for the current border situation oh lord we know what's happening in afghanistan oh lord and our hearts goes out for the people over there oh lord that uh, you know that you would have mercy upon those people the normal civilian the women and the kids and everybody oh lord and also about our border forces oh lord and and give them direction oh lord so they know like you know who to let in i mean to whom all they can let the uh, enter our country and and who do want uh, they should not allow to enter our country oh lord uh, we pray for a compassionate heart oh lord we also pray for the current pandemic situation which continues oh lord especially pray for uh, the people who are in the front line the doctors the nurses the medical infrastructure and especially we want to pray for the kids oh lord because this time it's impacting kids as well oh lord more than the you know elderly people so we pray for your protection upon them and we also pray that you know let the things normalize let the let kids start going to school it's been almost close to 2 years they've been you know uh, attending schools from home oh lord and and we know that you know you made us free oh lord and kids also wants to go out oh lord uh, read with other students uh, you know so we pray for them pray for things to normalize oh lord 
we pray for the current monsoon situation oh lord it is decent oh lord but in some areas we, we keep hearing about landslide about flooding oh lord so we pray for a normal monsoon oh lord and also pray for all the people who have been impacted by it oh lord we pray for uh, many christians are being persecuted oh lord in different parts of the country oh lord but we pray that you would give them strength you would give them uh, give the family members the strength oh lord you would give them ways and means by which they can protect themselves oh lord we also pray for the you know investigating officers the the, the judges who are there oh lord that uh, these they take the right kind of decisions oh lord but we also know oh lord uh, where persecution happens your word uh, spreads even faster oh lord india we see uh, you know there is a lot of uh, harvest is already there we have to go out and and reach out to the people oh lord help us to do that uh, strengthen us oh lord and also you know help us to be focused in you oh lord and i mean it's at least 6th or 7th individual in the world is in india oh lord we pray for all our fellow countrymen oh lord and our heart's desire is you know that uh, they should hear the word oh lord and they should uh, you know become your followers uh, and your disciples oh lord thank you lord thank you jesus in jesus most precious name i pray amen the most epic adventure ever Group VBS is taking kids on a ride they'll never forget Get on board the Rocky Railway Your church will be on track at Sing and Play Express. With Jesus to lead us, we're on the right Get ready for high energy fun at Locomotion Games. Experience impactful Bible lessons and Bible adventures. You'll have amazing discoveries at Imagination Station. Take a glimpse into the world of five awesome kids who learned that Jesus' power pulls us through. The best part is full steam ahead at Rocky Railway. Come, let us pray for tithes and offerings. Our gracious Heavenly Father, may we give our offerings to you with gladness and joy. Everything we have belongs to you. May we rejoice to give some back to you. Pray that our offerings may be acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ. In the precious name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 
moving on to the word uh, today we have a very interesting topic financial maturity in times of crisis and who better than uh, rajiv sharing the word today uh rajiv doesn't need any introduction we all know him well i would also like to mention here that uh, we were uh, blessed to be a part of perulas and rajiv cell group when we joined bombay baptist church over to rajiv good morning church this morning i have the joy or privilege of sharing financial maturity in times of trouble in the past 3 weeks we have seen emotional maturity in times of trouble relationship maturity in times of trouble and spiritual maturity in times of trouble and this morning i'm going to share on the financial maturity in times of trouble bill gates was asked if there was someone richer than him his reply will melt your heart back then bill gates was the richest man on earth someone asked him is there anyone richer than you in the world bill gates replied yes there is a person who is richer than me it was when i wasn't rich or famous he was at the new york airport and he saw a newspaper vendor he wanted to buy a newspaper and realized that he didn't have change so he left the idea of buying and returned it to the vendor telling him that he didn't have any change to himself the vendor said i'm giving you this for free on his insistence bill took the newspaper now coincidentally after 2 to 3 months he landed on the same airport and again was short of change to buy a newspaper the vendor offered bill the newspaper again for free of charge he refused and said i can't take it as i don't have change to return the vendor said you can take it sir i'm sharing this from my profit i won't be at a loss so bill took the newspaper after about 19 years bill became famous and he was known by people suddenly he remembered that vendor and he began searching for him after one and a half months he found him and he approached him and he asked him do you know me he said yes you are bill gates so bill asked him again do you remember once you gave me free newspaper the vendor said yes i remember i gave you twice bill said i want to repay that help you offered me that time whatever you want in your life tell me i shall fulfill it the newspaper vendor paused for a moment looked at him and it said sir don't you think by doing so you won't be able to match my help bill asked him why he said i helped you when i was a poor newspaper vendor but you are trying to help me now when you have become the richest man in the world how can your help match mine that day bill realized the newspaper vendor was richer than he was because he didn't wait to become rich to help someone people need to understand that truly rich are those who possess a rich heart rather than lots of money any secular psychologist or sociologist will tell us that an average person definitely does not reassess their daily and lifetime priorities a famous harvard psychologist dr susan david notes that during this time of quarantine and lockdown and this pandemic many people recognize their priorities and values have been petty what happens is we become so hooked up in an autopilot mode or an autopilot of autopilot living lifestyle with all our habits and routines market researchers believe that pandemic will cause many to not be so measured with their possession to their with their things with what they have accomplished in a survey on post pandemic spending 61% of survey respondents 
said they cancel or cut back all their spending during the pandemic because their time in self isolation reconfigured their relationship to the things they possess now most people when i talk they are really worried about the current economic situation and the health of the country especially as it affects their lives generally my counsel is consistently be that you know we need to really hear god we need to really hear what god is trying to tell us in this trying times we should listen of course in all circumstances but i found that when the going is rough when the going is difficult our hearing improves now the question i ask i think we all need to be asking during this economic stress isn't how much or whose fault is it or how bad can it get or not even will i lose everything the real question that we need to ask ourselves what might god be teaching me and a quick follow on question is will i be able to retain that wisdom when the financial storms are over now the passage that i'm sharing this morning is from matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 24 which goes something like this do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also the eye is the lamp of the body if your eyes are good our whole body will be full of light but if your eyes are bad your whole body will be full of darkness if then the light within you is darkness how great is that darkness now no one can serve two masters either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and mammon now church there is no easy co- coexistence between god and mammon or money but if they are going to coexist there are going to have to be some very strict parameters or very strict guidelines on this relationship god is going to have to be firmly and thrown or god will have to be your highest priority and has to be in the center of your life your household and everything else and money needs to take a back seat or it should be held in a short lease eternity hangs in the balance as far as this relationship goes now getting the connection or getting the interplay between god and money right is the core task for us as stewards of god in terms of what god has given us we've got to be right on god and right on money and we are not going to be then otherwise we we're not going to be right on eternity now this is absolutely counter cultural because this is jesus in his prophetic office getting in the face of christian jesus is going to tell you how to get right on the money so you can enjoy eternal happiness with him forever now church jesus polarized two gods of this world the god of mammon the usurper god the god that that illegally occupies uh, a space in our life and takes allegiance uh, takes dominion but the true lord god of the world needs to take priority in our life and these two why for attention or these two why for our allegiance and our everything else it was jesus who challenged people like the rich young ruler zacchaeus matthew the tax collector and the pharisees to have a conversion not only in their minds and hearts but also in the way they conducted their financial affairs and in many cases those people made instantaneous instantaneous changes now i want to talk to you about the three paragraphs from from this passage and three primary thoughts for us to have a a, a sense of final financial maturity in times of trouble the first thing 
we must have the right storehouse the first one deals the first first scripture in the same passage deals with the right storehouse if you are going to be right on the money we've got to have the right storehouse is it going to be earth or is it going to be heaven now it says do not store up for yourself treasures on earth but store up for yourself treasures in heaven notice he says it's not wrong to store money he commands it in verse 20 store up note that it is not or at all wrong to have concerns for your final personal financial situation we all need to have a proper financial planning he's not even saying it's wrong to desire treasures or wrong to desire great wealth he said store up yourself store up for yourself treasures the crux of the matter is not the money it is the storehouse where the money goes store it in heaven Jesus says in heaven not on earth not on earth not and purely he says says it very clearly in heaven just in heaven and period and nothing else that's what Jesus asking us each one of us to do now there are three primary reasons why 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 they ask us to why Jesus is asking us to store our money in heaven now as an ex banker whenever or, or rather anyone who invests money there are three fundamental reasons they invest money they look at risk they look at returns and they look, they look at liquidity how high returns can i get how liquid is my money when i want my money will i get it back and how safe is my money so what is the reason there are three primary reasons when jesus is asking up asking us to store uh, store our treasures in 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 heaven the first reason is safety he says treasure on earth is susceptible to corruption decay and theft if you store it up down here it is going to fly out of your hands one way or the other but money stored in heaven is safe and secure there is no corruption in heaven there are no thieves in heaven the second reason is the returns treasure in heaven is high yield high returns here in this world we like to invest money and we'll get a return of 10 15 20 if you're good enough but you know you know the interest rate what the banks give but if you're a smart investor if you have a a good financial planner you may get 15 to 18 to 20% return now scripture talks about heavenly investment yield it talks about 30 60 and 100 fold which means the returns are 3000 6000 and 10000% heaven is high yield heaven it's safe the third reason is there is also a wellness issue associated with the storehouse of heaven verse 21 says where your treasure is there your heart will be also hearts and treasures interact together initially your treasure goes where your heart goes let's say you have your heart set on buying a new car or a bigger house or an upgrade to your computer your money is going to follow your heart no doubt but then there is a reciprocal reaction your money goes that direction and then your heart goes all the more toward that thing jesus says where your treasure is ultimately that's where your heart is going to go so we we are going to have to lead our hearts toward heaven by investing our resources there he he is so emphatic about this in verse 19 it says do not store up for yourself treasures on earth that could be translated as stop right now stop stop storing storing up treasures for yourself for on earth cease and refrain and desist right away you know we all live in a very very consumer centric economy where exchange of money drives our prosperity jesus says stop stop sending money through this consumer economy time and time again and start storing up in heaven uh, how do we store our uh, money in heaven uh jesus words not only count cultural for the present moment but also for 20 30 or 40 years down the line because conventional wisdom of this world is telling us we are going to need 
to stock of money in a storehouse here if you're going to enjoy a conventional retirement. Now, this world is telling us we are going to be done working and still have 30 more years to live. So you're going to need to stock up your money if you're going to be comfortable in that time. It's perfectly all right to do. That's what the world that's what the world tells you. A recent article in Forbes reported the conclusion of Chuck Feeney's journey to give away a fortune. The article was titled The Billionaire Who Wanted to Die Broke is now officially broke. Feeney, 89, co-founded airport retailer Duty Free Shoppers in 1960. <clears throat> he amassed billions while living a life of monk-like frugality. Over the last four decades, Feeney has donated more than $8 billion to charities, universities and foundations worldwide through his foundation. He did this all anonymously. Forbes called him the James Bond of philanthropy. And his example ignited a firestorm of radical generosity by other businessmen. More than 210 billionaires have signed the giving pledge to date. In an article titled Zero is the Hero, Finney summarized his mission in a few sentences. I see little reason to delay giving when so much good can be achieved through supporting worldwide causes. Besides, it's a lot more fun to give while you live than give while you are dead. Now, at the conclusion of his journey to broke, Finney tells Forbes, we have learned a lot. We would do some things differently. But I am very satisfied. I feel very good about completing this on my watch. My point number two is we must have the right stance. We also need to have the right stance. That is the right mental approach and the emotional posture before money. Now, that's what the second paragraph of the passage addresses. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the light within you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Now, you've got to have uh, the right posture, the right stance towards money. And it begins with our perspective. It begins with our vision. Our bodies go where our eyes are looking. That's the, that's the thing scripture says when our eyes are focused on money. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money, with the eyes for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. The stance we take toward God and toward money is determined by our vision. Good eyes in this context means singular eyes, eyes that are focused on on one object of desire and it's Christ and its kingdom. Bad eyes in this context is informed by the Jewish thought that says the evil eye, the bad eye wanders from God toward things, towards possession. The evil eye is mis miserly, selfish, greedy. And Jesus says, if you got one of those kinds of eyes, you might think, you are enlightened, but you are actually darkened. The light within you is actually in total darkness. We may think we are smart, wise and going down the, going down the right path. And we are filling the whole life with darkness. That is what Jesus says. We got to have good eyes. We got to have the right perspective, the right stance. We got to have a heart of a steward, a steward who's responsible and who, 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 who doesn't take a mentality of ownership, but takes a mentality of a steward of managing the financial resources which has been given to us. Matthew Henry, 
a great Bible commentator said, it ought to be the business of every day to prepare for our last day. We got to know what is important and what is not. You know, the average life cycle of any currency in any country is 18 months. It get exchanged so many times that it gets worn out. So it's a poor store of wealth. Even if you keep it crisp and new and keep it somewhere. Because we have something called inflation with that value of money becomes as good as zero. So the money God has given us is need to be put in proper use. We have to invest this thing so it yields some return because if you sit on this, it's going to lose its value. You know, the financial planners of this world, uh, I used to be once upon a time. Uh, uh, they will always say you need to think long term. Don't think about it, what it can buy you today. Think about it, what you could get or returns that you could make 20, 30, 50 years from now. Put it to work. Don't touch it. Don't keep dipping into it. What you have saving for a long term and don't keep moving it around. Find a good fund. Invest in some mutual fund. Leave it there. Don't try to time the market. Don't move it around. You're going to end up losing it. It's perfectly all right to do proper financial planning, but we need to have the right perspective towards money. The financial planners of this world are not going to have you think long term enough at best 30 years or maybe 50 years. What's going to happen in 3000 or 5 million years from now? Kingdom investment continues to reap reward. We are called to live for eternity for millions and millions of years. So we have to start acting and living like who are people who are going to live forever. If you bank it here, it's not going to last much beyond your beyond your lifetime. Now I come to point number three. So back our first point is we need to have the right storehouse. The second point is we need to have the right stance. And the third point is we must have the right sovereign. This is going to be my last point. Now, if you were in the audience back then, when Jesus came speaking about two masters, he says, he states, you cannot serve both God. And what would you expect him to say? I would expect him to say you cannot serve God and Satan. But Jesus turns the table and he pulls the mental rug from under his ears. Jesus said, you cannot be slaves of God and mammon or money. Now, the word money is capitalized in the King James Version. It is translated as mammon. Mammon, Jesus is personifying money as a rival God. Jesus is making things very clear that money is not some impersonal medium of exchange. Money is not something morally neutral, a resource to be used in good or bad ways, depending solely upon uh, your attitude. Money has a power that seeks to dominate us. Money is like God or money is God like. We have to have the right sovereign. Is it going to be money or is it going to be God? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise, despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus expressly, expressly states the impossibility of dual lordship. We can't have two lordship. You might have a dual citizen citizenship, but you can never have a dual lordship. There's only room for one person in your heart. Is it going to be God or it is going to be money? The writing of money with a capital letter is very, very informative. In the original Greek New Testament, the word mammon with a capital M, it's a way of personifying money. It is it's listing in not as a thing, but as a person, as an idol, as a false deity. It's got power. It's got pull on your life. Money has weight. Money has mass. Therefore, it exerts gravitational pull like all objects with mass too. So when you start amassing or start accumulating money, it's gravitational pull grows stronger and stronger. 
money as a medium of exchange if used well and not hoarded stays lower case money with small m is neutral capital m money is not neutral it has an unruly power so if you start to stack the stuff up it's no longer lower case it's capital m it's a person it's a day it's 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 a person that will control your life it's no longer just money it's a false god and it starts exerting the pull from your life you start getting drawn into it it becomes the center of things for you and bends your will toward it to make you a slave so how do you keep yourself from getting wrapped into the orbit of mammon simple don't amass it don't stockpile it don't store it up it will pull you into a gravitational field send it to heaven invest in the kingdom ministry your heart is going to start getting pulled there there's only one place where your heart can go at a time and that is kingdom investment now there's a very difficult prayer agar prays in proverbs chapter 30 verse 7 to 9 i find it difficult to pray and we all may struggle he says two things i ask of you god do not refuse me before i die keep falsehood and lies far from me now this is what he says give me neither poverty nor riches but give me only my daily bread otherwise i will have too much and disown you and say who is the lord or i may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my god a prayer for no poverty the first thing that agar prays to god for is for no poverty it's easy for us to pray god don't give me any poverty i ask you o oh lord give me no poverty he's talking about real poverty here grinding poverty that involves difficult choices a poverty that leaves you with few choices if any options that sounds familiar but isn't that what we are hearing today then he says a prayer of no riches oh i find it difficult to pray this prayer the second thing is agar prays god for no riches he prays i ask you o oh lord give me no riches every one i dare say wants to be rich we all want to be rich we all want to have enough so we have enough choices everyone wants money and wealth and abundance of possession but agar wisely notes there are dangers in riches the addiction the addictive nature of riches the preacher of ecclesiastes warns us that money is addictive addictive and no matter how much you have you never think you have enough he says in ecclesiastes 5:10 who ever loves money never has has money enough who ever loves wealth is never satisfied with the sin cup in 2018 harvard business school undertook a first of its kind study of over 4000 millionaires in united states asking them about how much money it would take to make them happy now each millionaire was taken to uh, was asked to report how much money they currently had and how happy they were on a scale of 1 to 10 and then how much money they thought they would need to get to 10 the, on on the happiness scale now shockingly 26% the largest response said they want 10 times more the second largest option was 24% they said they want 5 times more followed by 23% said they want 2 times more of their existing wealth only 13% of the respondents said they currently have enough to be happy perhaps most surprising of all this answer was consistent no matter how much money a person had this means that someone with a 100 million dollars was just as likely as as happy as any other who's got 10 million dollars in another interview michael norton suggested that problem for so many millionaires is comparison so the question of happiness is not so much do i have enough but do i have more than those around me not in concluded if a family amasses 50 million dollars but moves into a neighborhood where someone has more money they still won't be happy all the way up the spectrum of wealth basically everyone says two or three times as much more to be perfectly happy billy graham in his book 
just as I am wrote of a telling experience. Some years ago, Ruth and I had a vivid illustration of this on an island in the Caribbean. One of the wealthiest men in the world had asked us to come to his lavish home for lunch. He was 75 years old. And throughout the entire meal, he seemed close to tears. He said, I'm the most miserable man in the world. He said, out there is my yacht. I can go anywhere I want to. I have a private plane, my helicopters. I have everything I want to make my life happy. Yet, I'm as miserable as hell. Billy Graham said we talked him, we talked to him and prayed with him, trying to point him to Christ who alone gives lasting happiness and meaning to life. Then we went down to the hill to a small cottage where we were staying. That afternoon, the pastor of the local Baptist church came to, the, came, came, came to meet us. He was an Englishman. He was also 75 years old, a widower who spent most of his time taking care of his two invalid sisters. He was full of enthusiasm, full of love for Christ and others. And he said, I don't have even two pounds to my name. He said with a smile, but I am the happiest man on this island. Billy Graham relates how he asked his wife Ruth after they left, who do you think is the richer man? She didn't have to reply because they both already knew the answer. What if the worst happens to us? What if we lose it all? Listen carefully. If you are a Christian, or if we are all Christians, or if you are a Christian, your life is entirely in Christ and not in yourself. And if anybody knows how to take care of someone, even at the lowest point of their existence, it is Jesus. It was Mother Teresa who said, you'll never know that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you've got. We must learn to trust God. He has our best in mind. He loves us. He can care for us. Seek his wisdom. Ask what lessons he wants to teach you today. To be grateful, wise, prudent, faithful, mature and content. I can share stories from my own life. And this is one story that comes to my mind. I thought before I close it, I must share it with you. In 1996, from 1995 to 96, 97 onwards, I got exposed to the stock market and greed took over me and I started speculating the stock market. In a matter of six months, I lost 25 lakhs, 42,000. That was in 1996. I had to, we had to sell the house. We were in debt, but God, and we lost everything, but God in his faithfulness, in three years time, we managed to recover all. And God continues to show his faithfulness till now. We have never found lack. We must have lacked in our commitment to God, but God never lacked in his commitment towards us. He continues to love, love, he continues to love us, continues to provide us with every possible blessing. Financial maturity, we all need to have, whether in times of trouble or in times of plenty. We need to have the right storehouse. We need to have the right perspective. We need to have the right sovereign. And then we can pray like Agar from the book of Proverbs, a man of wisdom, make a request of God. He prays, I ask of you, Lord, give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me my only daily bread. Are we able to pray this? Church, when Jesus spoke about serving two masters, I mentioned that Christ is seeking our allegiance. Actually, Christ is not seeking our allegiance. What Christ is seeking from all of us is our total surrender. And once we take this posture or an attitude of total surrender, then we will see a level of maturity which is so beautiful and we make Christ look so good, whether, whether it's an emotional maturity or spiritual maturity or relationship maturity, 
or finally the financial maturity in times of trouble what christ is seeking is our total surrender so church let's surrender ourselves to christ the master who's worth it all may god bless us thank you thank you rajiv for the word we receive what rajiv shared come let's pray the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face towards you and give you peace amen uh, this sunday morning service is over have a blessed sunday and a great week ahead see you all at the virtual lobby at 11:45 bye bye joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that Yeah.